All right, today's video, we're going to talk about the basics of an RF diplexer. And uh, a diplexer is typically just a pair of filters that allow both transmit and receive on two different frequency bands through one feed line. And usually it's just composed of a high pass and a low pass filter, you know, kind of in this configuration here, where a single feed line could bring in, say, VHF and UHF signals in one direction or the other, and then the filters would separate them out, maybe to go to two different antennas. And this is very common, uh, for, uh, commonly used for uh, amateur satellite communications. Uh, where oftentimes the uplink, you know, from ground to the satellite is on VHF and the downlink from the satellite back to the ground is on UHF. So you may have different antennas uh, for that purpose. Now a diplexer is not to be confused with a duplexer. A duplexer forms the same function allowing, you know, transmit and receive to two different uh, antennas or two different paths uh, but typically those paths would both be in the same frequency band. So in that case, these filters would be much sharper uh, filters and often be uh, resonant cavities and things like that. But for a triplexer, it's typically a little bit easier because these uh, frequencies are in different bands. In fact, the same concept could be expanded to more bands and would be called a triplexer or a quadplexer, you know, if you add three or four bands on the other side here. So the diplexer we're going to be using in this video is uh, this board right here that I assembled. And it was featured in the uh, November-December 2009 issue of the AMSAT Journal. Now AMSAT is the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation. Uh, they really, as an organization that's focused primarily on amateur radio uh, satellite operation. So uh, in this issue, uh, Ron K. W6ZQ has uh, published a short article on building your own diplexer and that's what you have here. So in the article Ron talks about uh, using a program to design the lumped element LC filters and he used a program called LC. It's available from Town Software. It's also included on the CD that comes with the uh, ARL handbook uh, but there is a uh, kind of a limited free version available and then there's also a version you can pay for that has more features but it's a really neat program I've used it in the past as well. And the basic design that uh, is presented in the article is, uh, is these two. This is the low pass filter. And you can tell it's low pass because there's a DC path here, so we know that low frequencies would work fine. And as you go higher in frequencies, the, inductance goes up, you know, the inductive reactance goes up, the capacitive reactance goes down. So we can see that's a low pass filter. And this is the high pass filter. So, and then, again, the design here is that this is going to uh, pass all the frequencies uh, up through the VHF frequency band and then this is going to reject uh, up to the VHF and then pass UHF and above. And those are the two um, filters that are built onto this board. Now this board was uh, you know, supplied by the author of that article and uh, was offered as a kit uh, several years ago that uh, my friend picked up and asked me to put together for him. I'm not sure if it's still available or not but uh, it's a very simple circuit as you can see. Uh, if you look along the top here we can see this is the, the low pass path uh, we've got our series inductor, a shunt capacitor, okay, another series inductor, another shunt capacitor, another series inductor. And uh, we can see the back is mostly ground plane and a couple of holes cut out for the uh, ungrounded nodes. The uh, high pass uh, path is down here. Again, a series ca cap, shunt inductor, series cap, shunt inductor, series cap. You'll notice that the capacitors used in this kit are all variable. And uh, this was done, according to the author, so that you could fine-tune the response of this uh, filter for your own particular applications, you know, rather than using fixed values. You can also see that each of the inductors here are hand-wound. And I'll show you very quickly how I did that. The author specified the number of turns in each of these inductors uh, and specified that they should be wound so that the internal diameter of the coils was 6 millimeters. Now I found uh, just by experimenting here that a uh, 1564 drill bit, if I use that as a mandrel and round, wound wires around that, it would create uh, inductors or coils, okay, that uh, when you pull them off, because the wire tends to relax a little bit, when you pull them off, they'd have that 6 millimeter inside diameter. Uh, so that's what I used, and I made a bunch of them just to, and I picked the ones that came out kind of the best and the cleanest and put them on the board. 
Now in uh, stripping the insulation off this enameled wire you know, to prepare them to go into the board and then to bend the leads to get them go into the board sometimes the uh, inductors themselves can get a little bent and distorted. So what I found is that it was pretty easy that once I had them in there if they, if they were distorted at all I just uh, reinserted the drill bit back in there and kind of uh, straightened the wires out to, to make all the coils all nice and clean and straight and, uh, and symmetric again once I had them installed on the board. So just a nice little tip, uh, if you use some kind of a mandrel to, to form these uh, inductors, uh, keep that handy for when you put it, when you assemble it, because you can use that to kind of uh, fix things up again once you've uh, gotten everything assembled on the board. Okay, so with these uh, filters uh, kind of assembled, let's put it on the spectrum analyzer with the tracking generator and, uh, and tune these capacitors a bit to see how we can affect the filter shape for the low pass and the high pass filters. All right, so we've got the spectrum analyzer with the tracking generator set up here. And uh, one thing you'll notice as I start to hook this up is I have an uh, uh, inline attenuator here at the output of the tracking generator. And the reason I'm doing that is that I want to ensure that uh, across the entire frequency we're going to be sweeping that the tracking generator sees a good 50 ohm load. Because the impedance looking into the filter is going to change as we pass through the corners of these filters. All right, so I've got the tracking generator sweeping from 100 megahertz to 500 megahertz. We're going through the 6 dB filter. Uh, the tracking generator is putting out 0 dBm. I set the reference level to minus 6. Uh, so ideally, if we had uh, little, no attenuation through the filter, uh, the response will be at the top line here. We're looking right now at the low pass filter, and the high pass filter is terminated in uh, 50 ohms. All right, so uh, let's uh, go through here. I've got about uh, 40 megahertz per division here, so this would be 100, 140, 180 megahertz. So we want the roll-off to be somewhere between that uh, second and third division line here, okay, and uh, kind of roll off over here. So let's start uh, tweaking these capacitors and uh, see where we can go with this. So you can see we've got that response rolling in here a little bit, but uh, it's rolling down uh, quite a bit on this side. We're down a, a few dB. We'll start tweaking the other capacitor in here and see if we can kind of clean that up. Looks like we're going the wrong way. Let's go the other way on that. And that's pretty good. Now the filter is a bit wide. It's going out a little bit past 180 uh, coming down. So we may want to tweak uh, the other capacitor in here, bring that in a little bit. You can see we've got to be careful how far we bring that in. We're starting to get a little bit of attenuation up here. So, uh, so we're just going to play with these back and forth until we get the, the filter shape that we'd like to have for this filter. So that's actually pretty good right in here. Uh, looks like we're rolling off just a little bit past 140. We probably want to be just a little bit wider so we don't roll anything off in band. So that's probably right, pretty good right here. We're getting a lot of attenuation as we move up into the UHF band and we have a nice flat response here. Of course I could sit here and play with this for another five or ten minutes to try and fine-tune this even more. But you get the idea of what the, the process is here in terms of tweaking these filters to get the shape that you want. I am using a, a non-metallic uh, tool here to tweak these capacitors because if you stick something metallic in here you might change the capacitance slightly and you'll notice even if I put my, my fingers down on the back of the board how I can change the response a little bit. So you have to be a little bit careful here with RF. You know, same thing if I touch the inductors I can cause a little bit of a change in the, in the response. So you want to be careful to kind of keep away from that as you tweak things. It's not quite as critical on this uh, low frequency path, the VHF path, but it will be more critical on the, uh, the UHF path. Okay, I've now moved the connection uh, to the spectrum analyzer from the low frequency path to the high frequency path and I've terminated the, uh, the low pass side here. And now we've got three capacitors that we can go here and tweak. And uh, I'm going to start off with, uh, with this guy here so I can get this to engage and uh, just kind of rotate this around. I can see, well that gives me a pretty good flat response, but uh, that, that high pass corner is pretty low. It's still below about 180 megahertz. It's, it's sitting around 170. That's a little bit too low. So let's see if we can move that out as we tweak the other capacitors here. All right, see that one, let me find the, I'm rocking back and forth here looking for the point where the, you know, the high pass corner moves out the highest and that's about there. So now let's see if we can improve that response by tweaking these other capacitors here. So, so that one's affecting the uh, 
the stop band uh, attenuation here, so I think I might want to leave that one there. And let's kind of adjust the input capacitor here a little bit and see what we can get. So now we're getting pretty good. Let's see if we flatten that response out. That's actually not too bad. I mean, I got a little bit of peaking right here. I'm not too worried about that, but I'm getting some pretty good flat response out here and some pretty decent uh, stop band uh, attenuation. So that's just an initial cut in tweaking these, uh, these caps, but now I've got a decent uh, VHF path, say for the uplink for the uh, satellite, and now I've got a, a pretty decent uh, you know, high pass corner here for the downlink coming back from the receiver. Okay, I saved the trace from the uh, high pass filter and put it static on the screen here and connected back up to the low pass side. So now we can kind of see how these filters are working uh, with respect to each other. So uh, for the uplink, uh, we've got very little attenuation uh, going up to uh, the, that low pass filter side and uh, the, at the frequency of interest here about 140, 145 megahertz we're down a good uh, 10, 20, 30, oh, 35 dB or so of uh, you know, kind of stop band attenuation for the high pass filter. So that's pretty good. And we're looking at about the same thing on the other side. On the high pass side, the stop band attenuation from the low pass side is also about that 30, 35 dB. So uh, not too bad. So I hope you learned a little something about uh, what uh, diplexers are, not to be confused with duplexers. And uh, you know, have some simple, you know, fifth order lumped element LC filters can be used to create this type of uh, uh, gateway, if you will, uh, to allow VHF and UHF frequencies from a single feed line to be separated out to two separate feed lines. Again, uh, comments are always welcome. Uh, there'll be some links and some other information in the video notes below. And uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And thank you again for watching.